and you'll see my my updates will come in a lot slower. Trust me, when I collect connect Twilio to it, um, I really don't want it sending <laughs> right, to everything right. it's seeing every second. <laughs> right. Hey guys, welcome to Embedded Toolbox, the video interview series where we try to save the world by solving one engineering challenge at a time. And today we have on Rob Bobel, who is the head of engineering for AD Link. How are you doing, Rob? Good, thanks, Brandon. Yourself? I'm doing well, thanks. Um, so, everybody has to have an AI strategy today, but they start diving right in and realize that there are a whole lot of more components to developing an AI solution than just training and inferencing uh, algorithm and deploying it at the edge. You've got to have the hardware, you've got to have somewhere to get uh, that algorithm from and somewhere to put it to. Uh, so what are you seeing as some of the hurdles that your customers are facing when they ju just getting started essentially? The, the customers we're dealing with are AI system integrators, mm -hmm. and they, they these guys are experts. They know how to build models. Mm -hmm. They know they know how to take training data and, and and run algorithms against it and create a model that they need. It's it's the rest of the ecosystem that we provide. So it's actually capturing of training images, mm -hmm. it's deployment of models, it's inferencing from captured images, captured video, and actually viewing that. In a, in a nice user experience, but also being able to act on the data that you're seeing. So I know you have a little bit of a demonstration set up for us, and before that, you're gonna explain the various components of an AI deployment. Uh, can we jump right in? So what you can see on the screen is you can see the, the cycle around model creation. Well, we gather training images, we tag objects or we mark objects, we train a model, we kind of test it, and then we go round and round and round until we realize it's good enough. And then we, we deploy it to the edge. And once it's deployed, it then turns into a, a capture, a process, and then do something with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, that's, and that's what we've tried to encompass is with our apps and with our uh, capabilities is to cover both sides of that. OK, so let me introduce Visi AI. Uh, so Visi AI is, is the best of both worlds to MediaLink. So we've took our expertise in hardware, and we took our expertise in software and, and mashed them together and produced a platform that is award-winning, as you can see in the bottom right-hand side of my screen. Um, and, and what we've done is we've we took the capabilities of OpenVINO and we have integrated it into our data river. So actually, how do we get the value of the edge data river coupled up with OpenVINO to bring AI to the edge? And, and that's what I really want to show you next is how does this actually all hook together? How does this work? To start to explain um, the Visi software platform and the data flow, I really need to start with where do we capture our images? So that couldn't be from a smart camera, it can be from a video plane, but it, not, it always starts with um, one of our frame streamers. So one you can see that's detailed here is the AD Link frame streamer. That, that will take ingest data from video, from USB camera. We also have a Basler frame streamer and we've got a few other frame streamers that are in the works that kind of cover the 80% the of the market that we're, we're trying to provide. What the frame streamers do is they put video frame onto the data river and that video frame information can be used in a couple of different ways. So it can be used by the OpenVINO inference engine. It can also be used by our training streamer. And with our training streamer, we simply take the video off the data river and we FTP it, so I'll save it to disk, SFTP it to cloud, Wherever people need that data to be, that's kind of where we make it happen. And then just to come back a step, so once we have give the video frame to the OpenVINO engine, we produce an inference result. And on its own, it's, it's not much use. It's just a set of coordinates based off a frame. But what we do is we created our stream viewer, which takes the video frame, the inference result, and knits them together and outputs an RTSP stream. And that RTSP stream can be viewed by commercial, RTSP viewers, but for, for ease of use and also to try and keep everything inside one ecosystem, we created our Edge Profile Builder and also added the capability to add, oh sorry, to view an RTSP stream within it without having to leave that ecosystem. Wow. Now Profile Builder is the, is the center of what we do. It, it builds the profiles that are deployed, it configures the apps, it views inference results, it even provisions devices. 
The other thing that we also need to do, and this was on the very first slide, was to act on it. So to act on the inference result. And that's where our version of Node-RED comes into this. Our version of Node-RED has, we've, we've taken what Node-RED has done, a brilliant job, but we've added inputs and outputs for the data river. We've also added Twilio nodes, Twitter nodes, and we come with a usual raft of MQTT, HTML, all the connectors that you normally expect from Node-RED. That's awesome. And that's just so we can act in the real world and do something with it because it's all great drawing boxes around people walking up the street, but if you're not doing something with it, it's, it's kind of pointless. So to close the, the learning circle almost, we also introduced at this point the AdLink model manager. And the model manager contains our model zoo. It's deployed as part of the Visi profile, and it will sit there and hold the models that have been added to it um, for as long as we need. But the key thing here is that to actually deploy a model from the model manager to the OpenVINO engine requires our profile builder again. In it, we have the ability to discover model managers on the network and discover inference engines, exactly the same as we discover a device. We simply use the power of the data river to discover everything that's possible to be found on the network. <laughs> and we wrap it all up into a nice user interface that then a the user can then simply just drag a model onto an inference engine and the model gets sent. The, op the, the inference engine receives it, it unpacks it, it applies it, and it restarts the inference in based off the new model. That's great. When I think of AI, I, th I try to layer it on top of the Internet of Things because if you have an edge device that's performing all of these inferences, the way that the algorithm improves performance, accuracy, et cetera, is by sending it back to a, to a model, to, to the data center, um, and retraining it. So with the data river, you could, um, in essence, be taking all of these results that you're getting out at the edge and then pipe them back to you know wherever your edge data center is or, or wherever you're actually doing the model training, correct? Yeah, yeah, and that, that's a really good point. The next version of the training streamer, you'll be able to set a confidence level that you're comfortable with. And if, and if a video frame or an inference result falls below that level of confidence, it automatically captures the image and sends it off to storage to be retrained. Wow, that's awesome. Very cool. Uh, so what I want to do before I jump into a, a live demo is just really talk through um, our deployment story and how we, how we got to this point in time. Um, so when I joined um, the company a few years ago, it, it took quite a long time to configure one of our devices at the edge, um, depending on the complexity of the applications, um, the use case that it was going to be deployed in. It could take three, four days to, to configure, deploy, and get a device out the door, and that's just for one device. Um, so what we did was we kind of span everything on the head. We, we focused on user experience, and we said, okay, what's the best user experience we can give? Leverage all the tools we've got, leverage our capabilities and our expertise, and how do we leverage the data river again at the same time? So what happens when you get one of these sent from arrow.com? You unpack it, you put a network cable into it, and you power it up. And it immediately starts to broadcast its identity and its status, whether it's registered or not on the data river. And what that means is that Profile Builder can come along and it can discover any device on the network that's broadcasting. And then the user kind of has a choice of what to do at this point. They can, they can build their own profile. They can pull in third-party apps from, from Docker Hub or their own Docker repository. They can pull in our apps. Um, or if they want to, they can choose from a raft of AD-Link templates that we have available. And those templates are getting added to all the time. We have templates around um, our smart palette proposition, our machine health solution. We also have demos um, that simulate Modbus data being captured, um, data acquisition of, of vibration. Um, and, and all of those are in there for people to use and deploy to whatever device they want that's leveraging our platform. Now. What we've just implemented, and this is hot off the press, is the ability to actually take one of these templates or take a local profile, bundle it up into a Docker Compose file and send it directly to the device across the data river. Now this completely cuts out the cloud in terms of our deployment story. It allows us to, to be truly offline. So if I had my Docker repository in my network and I deployed it like this, the device would never have to go to the internet to actually be provisioned. Wow. Which... Now in the use case I'm going to show you, 
it comes from Docker Hub. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just um, I, yeah, haven't quite around, got around to building my own repository on site yet. Well, that's a game changer for a lot of critical applications. You know, it's always yeah. been an issue to be putting industrial type devices on the internet and this changes everything. Exactly. We think it's a massive game changer for us, but not just for Visi, but for all of our hardware, all of our software and all of our potential solutions. Proof's in the pudding. What I've just described, can I actually do it? So let me introduce you to Profile Builder. So Profile Builder has um, several different modules that you'll see across the top. We have um, our offering that we call Marketplace, which is the ability to connect multiple Docker repositories to a single, to a single source and then add those apps as we call them into a profile in whatever combination you see fit whether that's official docker apps your own apps our apps who's whoever apps and and I, i'll open up one of the profiles now and actually just you'll see some familiar names from the slides i've just showed you so what i've done is i've took the busy eye start again and i've just shrank it down a bit um just just for just for this session really um you can see in here that i have um our version of the open Beano engine which allows us to configure the, the engine how we want. We can add files, we can set different Docker commands. We can actually show the documentation for that application that we've produced as, as an organization to help people configure it. We even take third party apps. So Portana, it's not ours. We just take the latest one that they have available on Docker Hub, but it allows us to do some management at the edge. And you see if I click in, because it's not our app, it doesn't support our configuration, but we can still set Docker, uh, Docker commands, we can still set environment variables, we can still set everything we need to do for this app to run. If I then move into um, the devices tab, so the devices tab is, is basically what I was describing where a device is broadcasting its, its identity. I have two disease on my desk. One is registered, the other is, is not registered. It's just completely sat there waiting um, for, for us to do something with it. So that's what I want to do. So if I decide to register the device, I want to do a local registration. I want to do it across the data river. We previously used to do it using Azure IT Hub. And as you said, Brandon, it's, it's not a great mechanism to say to customers, oh, sorry, you need the cloud all the time. Right. So I select the local registration. I give it an alias. And an alias is just something for, for, for it to broadcast to the world that it has a name, it has an identity, but also for any profile builders on the network to understand the, the context of what it's been used for. Now I could go and use one of the templates if, if I chose, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that stripped down version of the Vizier I starter case just for this example. And that's what I've got locally. And you can see here that I have two profiles, the same two that I showed you earlier. And all I simply need to do is click install on that. And what that's doing is it's immediately gone off to the Visi. It's right here. And it said, there's your Docker Compose file. Please execute it. Bring up all of the apps as, as I've described. Apply the, the, um, apply the configurations. Apply any files that have been passed to it. Apply all the Docker commands. And if I refresh my screen, I should be able to click into my Visi and I'll see that I've got apps running. Now that's that's literally happened in in right. the blink of an eye, <laughs> right? And you know, refresh this data is live, so it's it's constantly telling me what's going on on that device. I can unregister it if I choose to. If I want to, I can I can use my actions and I can open Portana to view what's happening on there. And you can see that all my apps are running. You can see if I click in, my inference engine is drawing detection box inferences. And if I come back to Profile Builder, the one tab that I didn't really show was Vision. Now, Vision is where we do all of that management and all that, all that visualization of what's happening at the edge. So if I click in, you can see I've got two inference engines running because I've got two devices and they're both running different models. One of them's running my worker safety model. The other is running my object detection. And to show that, if I go into my streams and view my object detection, you can see clearly here, that it's, it's taken the, the raw frame, it's knitting together the inference box, and it's giving you a confidence level for each inference that it's drawing of what the object is that it's seeing. Fantastic. Um, it comes with an SD card in, which has the platform on. And as soon as you have that in Profile Builder, you're good to go. Fantastic, wow. 
and 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 if you need any instructions or any guides, if you go to uh, go to fifty dot AI, you'd see in there there's there's lots of guides, lots of blogs, and there's a new project section where people who are producing projects with Visi um, are actually publishing to hackster.io, but also to go to fifty just to show off what they've done to to then bring it back into that element of act. We need to do something with this. If I get the IP address for my Visi and open up my familiar port of um, Node-RED, you'll see what, what, what we provide for Visi is we provide out of the box a flow that's already set up. It's actually already deployed. If I click to view what's going on in debug mode, you'll see here that it's, it's seeing fire hydrants, people, it's seeing cars, it's seeing all sorts of stuff. And I'm probably best off bringing that back down to maybe every five seconds. And you'll see my, my updates will come in a lot slower. Trust me, when I collect, connect Twilio to it, um, I really don't want it sending <laughs> right, to everything right. it's seeing every second. <laughs> so let me just stop that while, while it's going, or otherwise it will um, just drive me crazy. So as you can see, there's lots and lots of nodes. Some of them are standard, some of them are not. So if we look at input, we've got a data river input, we've got a data river output, we might want to pull data in, do something with it and put it back on the river for another app to use. Maybe as a SI, you might have wrote your own app that needs something special to come off the river and you've took our SDK and integrated into the river. You might as well use our data river out node to, to publish that data back to use it. But the one I'm going to focus on is, is our Twilio node. Our Twilio node is is set up exactly as you'd expect a Twilio account. It took me about 10 minutes to set up a Twilio account. Um, once I'd worked out, I needed to register a phone number to actually send something. Um, and all I simply do is I go in, I take the details that are part of my Twilio account. I take the name of my Twilio account, for example. And then I take the phone number that I want to send it from. And this is the one that Twilio has provided to me. And I add that in. Now, what I wanted to do is I ideally wanted to send me SMSs. So if I put my own number in and then give it, um, sorry, I've missed out the country code. Now, what I probably want to do is I probably only want it to be when it sees a person. Um, I could add in more functions with all the possibilities that I could see if I really wanted to know that. But all I really want to do is every time it sees a person to, to just deploy it um, and, and send me a text. So if I just deploy that now, I expect my phone to start blowing up any second. Oh, there we go. And as you can see, Busy just spotted the person. And it's going to continue to come through until I delete that platform I, I've, I come out the box with, those apps I deploy, I can deploy to any of this equipment without having to change anything. I simply just decide I want to deploy it to the training server or to a DLAP or, or whatever it is, or to an AI camera, which I have two of here. Um, and I can simply de deploy the same apps and get the same result every single time. Where should users start once they get their hands on a busy AI kit? Just head off to go to 50.ai. Should they check uh, out 80linktech.com and, and the edge resources there? Um, yeah, so um, when you unbox your busy, it comes with a QR code which will take you to go to 50.ai. It will take you to the busy, uh, the busy AI introduction and it will guide you through the process of, of everything you need to do. Very good. And one last question. You mentioned that there are releases coming for Aiden Link Edge. That is an ongoing um, platform that is going to continue to be updated and people can expect to find more new features, correct, over time? Absolutely. We, we launched Busy AI uh, earlier this year, and since then we've almost doubled the number of apps that ship with it. <laughs> um, we've, doubled, we, we've increased the ability to visualize at the edge. We've We've added and refined our model management, our training streamers, and we're constantly reviewing and optimizing and adding new apps, adding new features and capabilities, and even sometimes just making it faster.